Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I'm back for another code tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a hover effect on a button that allows the background to slide over and you'll see that the font changes as well from a gray to a white. So this is a pretty cool effect. We're going to be using this on this checkout continue shopping option here. So whichever one you hover over, it goes back there and by default it's on checkout. This effect was created only using CSS. So let's get into the tutorial and I'll show you how to create this. All right, so I don't have anything set up beforehand, so we're going to create everything from scratch. So let's go ahead and create a index.html and then also create our CSS. I'm going to name it main.css. I'm going to go ahead and split my screen horizontal for now and I'm going to drag the CSS to the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our framework. So doc type HTML and then we'll open and close our HTML tags inside of there I'm gonna go ahead and do my head tag and then put a title and I'll call this let's just go with button tutorial button tutorial and then we need to also link to our CSS so link rel style sheet type of text and then href and then main.css. So now we need to open and close our body tag. Inside of my body, I always like to use a wrapper. So I'm going to say div class and give this a title of wrapper and then make some space. Inside of this is going to go everything we need to create this effect. So I'm going to start off by creating a button group. So div class button underscore group and this is going to be where both of our buttons go so the first button we need to actually put is the button that is displayed on the right and the reason we're doing this is because CSS does not allow us to select an element in front of another one and I'll explain this more in detail as we get into it so we're going to be using floats to put one on the left and one on the right regardless of how they're lined up in HTML. So that's so follow this exactly. There's a reason we're doing this. So the second button we're going to create is a href. I'm just going to give it a hashtag for now for the pound symbol. I'm going to say class button underscore two and then an ID of hover. And I'm also inside of here going to put a span tag and the span tag is what we're going to be targeting the hover effect with. And then I'm going to put continue shopping. Next thing we need inside of here after the span tag is another div tag with a class equal to button underscore BG. This is where our BG is going to be stored. So it's actually inside our second button's A tag. So now we're going to create the first button below that. So a href, pound sign that, class, button underscore one. We don't need an ID on this one. And I'm just going to say checkout. And so that's all the HTML we actually need for this site to function. It's pretty simple. Okay, so on this one line I put a lot of stuff. So I'm going to space it out so you guys can clearly see what, what all is going on here. So I'm going to space this out a bit. All right, so we have our A tag, and that's our button. And it's got a class of button2 and an ID of hover. Inside of that, we have a span with the word continue and shopping in there. So that's going to be our text. And there's a span around that because we're going to have to have two hover effects going on. Okay, so we have the ID of hover, which we're going to be targeting. And we're also going to be targeting the span tag as a second hover. And then also inside of the A tag, we have a div called class of button BG. And that is the actual background color that you see shifting from one word to the next. So that's why that's in there, so we can control it. And then this button is just by itself. So you can either put this all in one line or space it out like this. It doesn't really matter. All right, so with that done, we're ready to move on to the CSS. I also noticed off camera that I had a bit of a typo, so that needs to be HTML and not HMTL. So we would have had a problem if that was not corrected. So let's go ahead and launch the website. 
and you'll see we have our two buttons and we have the title of the website so I'm going to slide this a bit over and I'm going to drag my text editor about half the screen as well alright so let's start with the general stuff you need to add so HTML open the curly brackets and let's just set a font family and I think I used Helvetica maybe Helvetica and then a serif if that's not available that's more than likely going to be there though HTML and body now and let's set the height of the page to 100% the width also to 100% and the margin to zero okay next since I have a wrapper I need to target the wrapper class and set the width to 100% and the height to match the 100% as well and I'm gonna add a background color of white just because usually I set that and I change it later alright so that's pretty much the generic stuff we need so now we can move on to targeting our button group before we move on we are going to be using pixels so if you do change continue shopping and checkout to something of your own uh, you will be needing to change the pixels like the width and the left um, I'll show you how to do that it's really simple It'll probably take you two minutes to tweak it exactly that's how long it took me to make the example for the intro so it's not too hard so alright let's start by targeting our button group now so dot button underscore group inside our button group we need to add the width and I set my width to 340 pixels also we're gonna set a height of 40 pixels now I'm gonna add some padding so padding and let's go with 10 pixels and 40 pixels so 10 pixels on the top and the bottom and 40 on the left and the right since we are using text I'm gonna set the line height so that they're vertically centered to 40 pixels I'm also going to set the position relative because our button background here, our button BG, is going to use a absolute. So we're going to need this relative on our button group. I'm going to set a Z index of 1, so it's above everything at a Z index of 0. A margin left of auto and a margin right of auto, so that is. Um, horizontally centered and last let's set a margin top of a hundred pixels to get it off the top of the browser so now on to styling our buttons so the first button I'm gonna do is the checkout button so dot button underscore one and inside of here I'm gonna set the float to left the line height to 40 pixels this way it matches our button group line height a color of white text decoration of none so we can get rid of that underline and a transition of one second and actually because we are on a white background I'm gonna change this text to a black just temporarily so we can see what we've done so we've removed the underline and we have a transition of one second because when it changes from a light gray to a white we want that to be nice and smooth so now on to button two so dot button underscore two inside our curly brackets we're going to set the float to right this time and so now you'll see that both of our buttons are now lined up on the correct side text decoration of none a line height of 40 pixels all right so now they both are vertically centered inside of our button group and on the color of this one I'm gonna set this to a color code of the light gray we're gonna be using because by default our checkout button is gonna be white and it's gonna have the background behind it and this one's gonna be gray and then when the button background shifts over here this button is going to turn to white and this one's going to turn to gray. So our gray color is a pound symbol A6 AFBF. Okay, and so temporarily I'm also going to add a background color to our button group. 
So I'm going to say background dash color, and we're just going to change this to red. So now we can see the actual boundary of our button group. So we see that left is on the left side, and the right button is on the right side. And we added the padding to our button group so that if you select like button one, for example, you see we have some space over here for the background uh, BG to slide behind it. So now we're moving on to the background that's going to slide behind each text. So dot button underscore BG. And first I want to set a background color to a nice green color. So I'm going to use pound symbol 2ABB9B. And we can't see that yet, so I'm going to set a height of 60 pixels and a width of 170 pixels. So now we can see that nice green color. Now let's get it to the correct position. So it's a little off, so we need to say position absolute. And since we set the uh, button group right here to relative, it's going to be absolute to that relative. So instead of the top of the page, when we set top to zero, it's going to go to the top of that group. So now it's almost in position. Now we need to say margin left. And this is how we are going to slide the uh, color behind each word. So using margin left, we're going to set a different set of pixels to get it exactly behind checkout and behind continue shopping. So by default, we want it behind checkout. So I'm going to set this to negative 208 pixels. And you'll see that lines up exactly with the side border. And like I said, if you change this font, uh, it's going to be a different length. So you're going to have to change uh, this value and also the width value of this uh, if you use your own text. So it takes about a few seconds. As long as you set the background color on the group, you should be able to line it up visually, and it won't take that long. All right, so the next thing we need to do is set the Z index to negative one, and that way it puts it behind the text. That's why we set the Z index up here to one on our button group. I'm gonna add a transition of one second to match the transition on the first button. And notice we didn't add a transition to the second button because it's not necessary. Also, I like to use border radius, so I'm gonna say border dash radius, and let's do five pixels. All right, so there we go. We have a nice rounded edge, and it's positioned behind checkout. So now this is behind checkout. I'm gonna go and change the black color to white. And so let's see how that looks. Looking good. Okay, so now we're gonna do some hover effects. The first one we're gonna do is the button background and we're gonna move that and change the width on it. So to move this one, we're gonna target the span and we're gonna say colon hover. So when the span is hovered over, we want to, I'm gonna say put a plus here and say dot button underscore BG. So what the plus does, the plus selects elements that are placed immediately after. So if you look at our span, we have the div button BG right after it. So that's what we're doing. So we're saying on the span hover, target the button BG. So now we need to change the width because continue shopping is a much wider word than checkout. So we need the width to be 252 pixels. And then we also need to change the margin left. So the margin left is what controls where our button's at. So we need to set this to negative 40 pixels. So now if we hover over the span, which our word is included in, you'll see that it shifts over to 252 pixels. So now we have that movement going on, we want to change the colors of the text. So the first one we want to do is say dot button underscore two, and then put a greater than symbol, and then space, span, colon, hover. So what this is doing is using the greater than symbol, and what that means is every span that has the parent of button underscore two will be selected. So on the span hover, we want to adjust the button two. So we're going to change the color to white on that text. So now if we go over here and highlight this, you'll see that our text changes color. Let's change the color of button one now. So we're going to do this by saying dot button underscore two colon hover, and then I'm going to say the tilde key space dot button underscore one open and close my curly brackets. So the tilde key targets 
an element that precedes another one. So in other words, that's why we put button one after button two in our HTML up top here. Because if we didn't, we would have no way of selecting the button one to change the color. So if I put color, and then I'm gonna put my gray color in, which was pound A, six A, F, B, F. That should change color when we hover over it, and it does. So you'll see that we hover over the continue shopping, it changes to white, the checkout changes to gray, and the background slides over. Now we have two problems. If you're watching close enough, you've probably already seen them. When I move my mouse up to hover over the continue shopping icon, you'll notice the text on checkout changes color before the green bar moves. And the reason for that is because the span is not the same height as the continued shopping. So what we have to do is we have to click on the button 2 and you'll see here that the height is 40 pixels and you can see the box clearly. If I just go down here and I put span and I open that up, you'll see when it's targeted it's not as high. So we're going to fix that by adding some padding. So I'm going to put 10 pixels on the top and the bottom and 0 on the left and the right. So now they trigger at the exact same time because they're the same height. The other problem is that when you hover over continue shopping, the text changes color immediately. So to fix that, since we've been using the span tag to target the color change, we can just put a transition on there to one second to match our other two transitions we've already put in our code. And there you go, it's nice and smooth. So now all we have to do is find our button group and remove the background color set to red. And we have the final product. We hover over continue shopping, it changes to white and the green bar slides over. Checkout changes to gray, we unhover and it switches back. So it's a pretty cool effect that you can do. All right guys, that is it for the tutorial. One thing before we go, I do wanna mention that there was an ID called hover in this A tag. I did not actually use that, so if you wanna go ahead and remove that, you can. Um, adding it didn't do anything to the code. You can leave it there if you want. But I just wanted to mention that because I'm sure somebody would ask. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Let me know in the comments down below if you learned anything or what you thought. Also, if you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, it's Kaler. Thanks for watching the video. Click here to subscribe to my channel for new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. If you want to see this channel grow even more, don't forget to share this video. You can click the share button down below. Over here is YouTube's recommendation just for you, so go check out that video and let me know what you think in the comments. Up here is my newest video, and if you haven't seen it already, go give it a thumbs up. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.